Hello, welcome once again. I'm Imran Garda and you're in the stream. Today, a story requested by our online community. Could a proposed law hurt the right to protest in Malaysia? We'll examine the pros and cons of the Peaceful Assembly Act. Our digital producer, Ahmed Shihabuddin, is here looking out for all your live feedback. Hi, Ahmed. Hey. Joining him on the couch is uh, Peck Kun Heng, an assistant professor and director of the ASEAN Studies Center at American University. Welcome to the stream, ma'am. You are originally from Malaysia, well-versed on the topic. We're looking forward to all your expertise on this Thank discussion. you for having me on the show. Okay, now, as you may have noticed, this show is fueled by our online community. And you can actually go to Facebook, like us, and you can tell us about it if you've got a story you want us uh, to cover by sharing it with us on our Facebook page. We're also posting news updates there throughout the day. Uh, but for now, let's go to Ahmed with all of today's feedback. So this is where we take a quick look at stories you are sharing with us in the stream. These days, it seems like everyone is joining Twitter, including world leaders. Russian President Dmitry Medvedev, who tweets at, at Medvedev Russia, is now facing growing opposition by protesters who claim Sunday's parliamentary elections in Russia were not fair. Now, on Wednesday, this obscene insult directed at political opponents appeared on his official Twitter feed. Now, we translated it for you. It says, it has become clear that if a person writes the expression, quote, party of swindlers and thieves, in their blog, then there is a stupid sheep getting blank in the mouth. Now, it may go without saying that he used a vulgar word to complete his thought. Uh, the Kremlin, though, has said that a staffer was responsible for the tweet. But it's not just heads of state who are joining Twitter. Now it seems that Al-Shabaab has joined as well. Al-Shabaab is the largest among several armed groups in Somalia who favor Islamic law and the end of the country's transitional government. Now, on Wednesday, they began tweeting in English using the handle HSM Press. HSM is the English acronym for the formal name Harakat al Shabab al Mujahideen. Now, one of the six tweets that they posted on their first day was this one. It says, Seven Ugandan trained TFG, which is a transitional federal government soldiers, surrender themselves to Mujahideen in Mogadishu. They are welcomed after proclaiming repentance from apostasy. Now, Twitter has yet to verify that account. Now, remember, we always welcome your contributions here at the stream, so send your ideas to us on Twitter using the hashtag AJStream. For now, here's a quick look at who's tweeting the stream right now. My name is Aloysius. I'm here because I, I believe in democracy and our right to freedom to assemble. Hi, my name is Nalina Nayer and um, basically I'm here because I'm not happy with the bill. Uh, the bill takes away our right to assemble as Malaysians peacefully and that is a world fundamental right that should not be taken away from us. Therefore, the bill must be withdrawn and we must have real democracy. I'm Jonathan. I'm a law student and I'm here because I want to gather with my fellow Malaysians to protest the passage of this draconian bill and um, just want to uh, celebrate our right to peacefully assemble under Article 10 of the UN Charter. Well, who you just heard from there were Malaysians protesting against a bill that is widely expected to become law later this month. Now, the Peaceful Assembly Act would ban street protests and set stronger guidelines on how Malaysians can voice their grievances. Activists criticized the bill for being far stricter than the country's current security laws. But Malaysia's ruling party says it is necessary to maintain public order. All of this comes after an announcement Prime Minister Najib Razak made back in September to repeal the country's controversial Internal Security Act and enact progressive democratic reforms. Well, joining us now to discuss this issue via Skype from Kuching, Malaysia, is P. Kamalanathan, a Malaysian member of parliament who supports the bill. And in Kuala Lumpur, we have Lim Chi Wee, president of the Malaysian Bar Council, which has been organizing some of the protests against the Peaceful Assembly Act. 
Welcome, uh, both of you gentlemen, to the stream. I understand it's uh, a terrible hour of the night or early morning. Uh, nevertheless, you've taken the time to talk to us, and we yes, really appreciate indeed, Imran. That. Imran, thank you very much for having uh, me and Lee, the other side, um, for sharing our thoughts and opinions about the peaceful assembly bill. Okay, Mr. Kamalanathan, give yes. us the status of the peaceful assembly bill. We're not entirely sure well, whether it's been passed or not. Has the upper house passed it? Now, the uh, lower house of the House of Representatives have passed the bill anonymously and uh, we have now passed on the bill to the upper house. The senators will debate on the bill and we hope that bill will surely be passed. We hope it will be passed soon. But um, having said that, you know, I, like, I liked what you said earlier uh, about calling it as street protest. Yeah, we are not for the street protest. However, uh, if one question is asked to me, then uh, is this what... Is this what people want? Why are we doing this? We must remember there's this word called Salus Populi Suprema Lex Esto. It's a very well widely used word. And it means that uh, let the good of the people be the supreme law. And um, I think that's one of the reason, main reason, why this bill was introduced by our Prime Minister uh, recently. I'm looking at the bill here. I've got a copy of it on page 16. It says the prohibited places to protest uh, dams, reservoirs, water treatment plants, petrol stations, hospitals, fire stations, airports, railways, public transport terminals, ports, canals, docks, wharves, piers, bridges, marinas, places of worship, kindergartens and schools. Why didn't it just say you can't protest anywhere and everywhere? Because it seems as if it's anywhere and everywhere. No, uh, that's wrong because we did not say such thing because those, in those places are very important. It's where people move on with their daily life. It's a place that we all need to go to and nothing should interrupt the peaceful uh, situation. And we must also understand is uh, everyone has got the right to use, make use of the environment that they're in. That's a basic right. And when I heard just now some comments by some young teenagers, they were saying that we are taking away the democracy. That is so wrong because in fact, in fact, one, if you look at Article 9.2a, uh, you know, and yeah, Article 9 says the organizer shall within 10 days before the date of the assembly notify the officer in charge of the police district in which the assembly is to be held. However, Article 92A says an assembly which is to be held at a designated place of assemble, assembly should, need not go through that process. And what we are saying is if you are going to organize an assembly, in a hall, in a stadium, in a place which is not going to be affecting the local people there, then you don't even need to have a permit. You don't even need okay. to have inform the police. Uh, arguably, some of the local people there are the ones who actually want to protest. Nevertheless, let's go to uh, Lim Chiwi. Lim Chiwi, why are you against this bill? Well, let's put things in perspective. Firstly, at the moment, the current law recognizes possession. Um, although one has to get a police permit for, uh, for the procession. So the objections to the present uh, piece of bill is simply this. It takes away a pre-existing recognized legal right of procession. And in all the jurisdictions that we have looked at, the judges the world over in the Europe, United Kingdom, Hong Kong, Australia, Canada, even Zimbabwe recognize that in the freedom of assembly, it includes an assembly in motion or procession or mischievously described as street protests in the bill. So as a matter of law, this bill cannot take away a constitutional right for an assembly in motion. To address the second issue of the 21 prohibited places, some of which you have already mentioned, if you look at an urban town city uh, uh, anywhere within Malaysia, especially in Kuala Lumpur city center, you will not be able to find a place to have a, an assembly which is not within 50 meters of either kindergarten, school, place of worship, or petrol station. Yeah, that's a fair it, it point. Is the, that, that, so that, it, yeah, that, that is yes. a fair point. Let me, let me get uh, Pek Kun Heng to, to build on this because that's true. I mean, I've, I've been to, for example, Kuala Lumpur. All those places mentioned are always in and around your immediate surrounds, uh, which is yeah, effectively but... rules out most of, of that city. I haven't been to the other cities or too many of the other cities, so I wouldn't know. Uh, but uh, Peck, do you detect an authoritarian air about this bill? Okay, let me just maybe rephrase the, the question um, by asking, is this bill necessary? 
Right. You know, um, of course, it, you know, it, it, it has, uh, it, I mean, as uh, Mr. Lim says, um, it has taken away a right of Malaysians to have um, um, lawful possession with a permit, but is it necessary? And, I, and, I, and I'm saying that, I, first of all, you understand, uh, Mr. Kamal Nalvin, the government's concerned with law and order. They want peaceful demonstrations. They don't want uh, mass rallies to disrupt um, commerce in crowded downtown Kuala Lumpur. On the other hand, I think it is not necessary because Malaysian society is no longer the society it was in the 1950s mm. when such a bill was necessary when there was a clear communist threat. Right. You know, when the communists, with the labor movements, when they were out to overthrow the government. And then in the 1960s, this bill might have been necessary okay. because of racial tensions. Okay, let's, let's find, and we're going to get to racial tensions a little bit later on and look at existing racial tensions and ethnic tensions as well. Let's hear from some Malaysians in the community and others. Ahmed? Yes, Pak, it's interesting because you said and you framed it as, is this bill necessary? Well, we have Live J saying, just a question of the bill on Twitter. Have protesters given damage to society? For an example, he's saying looting. <laughs> if it hasn't, to him, he says, it's hard to understand this bill. Now, Kamal Nathan, I want to put this question to you. It came in on, sure. uh, uh, from our community via video from Cindy in Malaysia. Let's take a listen. Cindy Lu, I'm a Cindy Lu, I'm a Malaysian, and I've got a question for the guests in the stream. When the peaceful assembly bill was tabled, it was met with mixed reactions from the public. Given that there was a strong public outcry against the bill, is the parliament acting in the best interest of its citizens by bulldozing the bill through? Thanks. Come on, Nathan. Yeah, sure. No, we did not bulldoze the bill through. In fact, uh, it was in, uh, you, we used all a democratic process. In fact, this bill was tabled in the parliament and it was given an opportunity to be debated by all members of parliament. However, the opposition chose to walk out of the parliament, not even uh, uh, sitting back to vote about it, whatever reasons they have given. And having said that too, um, the, uh, I, the the, men, the the matter mentioned by this, the speaker just now, I think... Uh, me as the member of parliament, I had enough time to go back to my constituents and have a word with them. And we must understand that um, it is not about the right of the few who wants to go on the street. Um, as, as Imran was saying just now, or Dr. Peck was saying just now, look, um, we have to understand, yes, Malaysia was not like that many, many years ago, but recently, during some of the street protests, we had uh, hundreds and hundreds of police reports made by people uh, from the city uh, saying that they have been affected by this uh, street protest. And having said that, we are also, for example... Uh, but affected now, uh, in what way? Me, affected in what way? Their business. Their businesses were closed. Uh, some guys, you know, I have a gentleman by the name of Inche Abdul Bakar Siddiq, a businessman who sells textile. He said he lost nearly 200,000 ringgit because of damages done in the shop. He has made a police report. And all these things is happening, people on the street. And people cannot go to the city. What okay. I'm saying is, if you want to if you where want should to have they, But where should they go, Mr. Kamlanathan, to a, mm -hmm. to a football places, stadium in a you know, rural yeah. area with nobody around? No. Okay, what do what you want to... Okay, you want to organize... A peaceful assembly. And when you having having said it, when you want to organize a peaceful assembly, you must make sure you do not interrupt the life of others. What you have is a subject. You want to talk about a particular subject. Why need you go to why do you need to go and disrupt the lives of other people? But, so we are saying if you are going to organize a public assembly, do it in an organized manner. In fact, one the, the law is very clear. Yes, sir. Sorry, Mr. Kamal Nathan. I just want to say no. one organized matter. You say if you want to assemble to do it in an organized fashion. We have a lot of people on Twitter, including Vienna Louis, saying, do discuss then why the flash mob, which is an organized assembly, to appreciate Christmas trees, as it was called, uh, by killthebill.org, which was organized by them, was threatened with legal action and a court injunction. What would okay, you say I, to that? I'm not in a liberty to answer that because I've not read those. But what I'm saying just now, uh, example, you said just now about uh, nobody has been looting, so why this bill? So are you saying we have to come in a bill like this only after people go for looting? Okay, no, we don't but, think so. But Mr. Kamlanathan, I think the point being that this doesn't match up to international democratic mm -hmm. stands, uh, standards and norms. Maina Kai, the UN uh, Special Rapporteur on Rights to Freedom of Assembly and of Association, studied the bill I, I like and said, that. and I, said, I, quote, let me quote, many of these restrictions are not justifiable under international law. Let me repeat that. The UN Special Rapporteur on Rights to Freedom of Assembly and of Association saying many of these restrictions 
are not justifiable under international law. Yes. Okay, let me take, take, take that particular point, sir. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, but at the same time, the UN UDHR, okay, let me know. There's 30 articles in the UN UDHR. There is not even one article which talks about street demonstration. It does not recognize street demonstration, but it recognizes peaceful assembly. Now, having coming back the restrictions which are not justified, Malaysia is, has got a different, uh, a different background in total. We are multiracial, we are multi-ethnic, we have multi-religion. The, okay. uh, the slightest issue touched on any other Rusty. religion or race okay. can let's, create a lot of problems okay, as let's well. Get, let's get Lim Chi Wee then. Uh, Mr. Kamlanathan is saying because of the context of Malaysia's history, and current situation in the multi-ethnic democracy that Malaysia is, it's necessary to do things slightly differently to international norms. That is always the excuse which the government in a very paternalistic it's manner... It's not an excuse, Mr. Bring, Lee. It's not an excuse forward, at all. We have to protect the people. As the, I told you just now, it's salus populi suprema lex May I finish what I say? I, I, no, you I've have to say the right thing, say. Lee. You have to say the right thing. Um, I will defend what you have to say, your right to say it, but equally you must respect me to say what I have to say, even no, if you disagree. This is not a court of okay. law. I'm just giving okay, my let's opinion. Go. Okay, uh, uh, let's, let's give Lim Chi Wei yeah, a, a chance here. Thank you, uh, Mr. Parliamentarian. Um, this is what I call the bogeyman excuse, which all our, our some of our politicians would raise and say, in the name of public order, you cannot do this and this and this. Now, let me answer some of the things uh, the learned MP has said one by one. I think firstly, in law, you don't, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights need not have spelled out the details that the freedom of assembly includes a procession. There are any number of cases in various jurisdictions all over the world which have said that. And secondly, I have not been able to find any country and I stand to be corrected. I've not been able to find any country which prohibits freedom of assembly by way of motion. And in terms of historical record, save for that one tragic event on May 13th of racial riots, Malaysians have demonstrated their maturity, their respect for each other to be able to demonstrate in the streets in a peaceful manner. The Malaysian bar has been observers in any number of these demonstrations and we have found them to be peaceful. Wherever there has been incidents of pockets of violence, the, these have arisen because of excessive use of force by the police. And okay. this is backed up, this is backed up by our National Human Rights Commission inquiries reports. Okay, Ahmed come in and then... And then yeah, Limchi, we, we have many people from Malaysia. Uh, Kirsten Han is actually saying online, if all the opposition MPs had shown up to the parliament, they could have killed the bill. Why a walkout? It just helped pass the bill, which Mr. Uh, Kamal Nathan mentioned. Um, the ruling coalition has a majority in, in the lower house of parliament and in the upper house. Even if the opposition parliamentarians were in the lower house, the bill would still been passed. Okay. Because all the parliamentarians in the ruling side had to exercise their vote according to the party whip. So that is irrelevant uh, in the final analysis. Okay. Peck, Can I, yes, I'd like to add to this. Um, the the context of this is important because today these rallies, this March for Democracy or the March for Electoral Reform rallies, they, they are not out to overthrow the government. They're not out to change the political system. They are committed to peaceful demonstrations. And I observed the last rally in uh, July where there were hundreds of marshals, you know, there to enforce law and order, to enforce civil behavior among the marchers. And, you know, so we're talking about a movement organized by civil society members, you know, opposition leaders, supported by Malays, Chinese and Indians of the middle class. You know, middle classes have enjoyed prosperity, committed to the growth of Malaysia. You know, so this is not as Malaysia is not is no seething cauldron of un, unemployed youth okay. or workers. Let's take that and pose that to Mr. P. Kamlanathan. Yes, <clears throat> Doctor. I have, I have, I have. I'm not uh, saying uh, that you are not, uh, you are wrong. You are absolutely correct. Uh, I'm, st I'm, st I'm, I'm, in I'm in coming back to the same point again. We have not stopped anyone from organizing peaceful assembly. Anyone can organize peaceful assembly at designated places. There is no need for permit. Uh, 
you can you don't even have to inform the police that if you want to organize an assembly a peaceful assembly at designated place there's no issue at all if, if you want protection you can go ahead and organize it inform the police they will come and protect but, you that's the point but Okay. Mr. Kamal Nathan, we have a yeah. video uh, that we just want to play an excerpt from this video because it, it challenges that very comment you just made. Let's take a listen. For I, I can't see the ahead. video. Besides, they say no more street protests. That's ridiculous too. And they say you don't need to apply for a permit. But if the police find something objectionable about the assembly, they'll tell you not to hold it. It's just like applying for a permit. So who are they trying to fool? So he... Did you hear that? Yeah. I, I heard that loud and clear. Yes, we are not for street protest. Sir, I come from a constituency which is about 60 kilometers up north to Kuala Lumpur and I spoke to my constituents, I represent them and they have told very clearly to me, majority of them have told clearly to me when I spoke to them, they are not for street protest but they are all for peaceful assembly. He has got it wrong. He, he can organize peaceful assembly. If it's going to be a designated area, nobody is going to disturb him. Well, That's another well, I issue. Suppose, well, well, look, I mean, I suppose we can, we can debate the semantics uh, as, uh, until we're blue in the face. At the end of the day, yeah. it's up to the police's in interpretation and the government's interpretation of what makes something peaceful or not. And I think that's where not. the protesters <laughs> and the opposition uh, differ. Not Mr. Kamlanathan, um, Mr. Kamlanathan, can I pause you there for a second? And, and Limchi, yeah, we sure. stay where you are as well, because we're going to go to another section now, but we're going to continue this discussion in our post-show. Pek Kun Hang, uh, stay here as well. We'll continue to discuss the different permutations regarding this uh, proposed law in Malaysia in the post show on stream.aljazeera.com. But for the moment, Ahmed, what are some of the other stories that we're covering? Well, Imran, when it comes to Twitter, which we were just discussing on the show, uh, U.S. President Barack Obama here in the United States, along with leading Republican candidates, are actually losing. But Congressman Ron Paul of Texas is leading the field, according to a new social media study from the Pew Research Center. Now, the study analyzes more than 20 million election-related tweets from May to November, about 55% of all tweets about Ron Paul were positive. As you can see right here in the dark blue, uh, this column shows positive tweets and it far outnumbers the negative tweets. And the blog posts as well about Ron Paul were similar. They were all positive or there were many more positive than negative. Whereas all the other candidates, as you can see at the top, have more negative comments than positive ones. Now, in the mainstream media, Ron Paul is often seen as the unelectable candidate because of his libertarian beliefs and stark criticism of U.S. foreign policy, specifically his calls to end America's wars in both Iraq and Afghanistan, which seems in tune with many on Twitter. And his campaign ads are as unconventional as the candidate himself. Let's take a brief look at this one. Imagine for a moment, a moment that somewhere in the middle of Texas, there was a large foreign military base, say Chinese or Russian. Imagine that thousands of armed foreign troops were constantly patrolling American streets in military vehicles. Imagine they were here under the auspices of keeping us safe or promoting democracy or protecting their strategic interests. Of course, we will be keeping a close eye on the use of social media in the US elections next year. But another story we've been tracking here is the Occupy Wall Street movement and a new project that maps and aggregates different Occupy-related live streams from around the world. It's part of a larger Occupy research project at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which is studying the de demographic makeup of the protesters known as the 99%. Now, you can just quickly see that here in South America, if I click here in Brazil, there's a protest. Even in Australia, if I click down here in Brisbane, even in Kolkata. Uh, so those are our stream leads. If you want to find out more about these stories, visit stream.aljazeera.com forward slash leads. Cast your votes for the stories that pique your interest and we may cover it in an upcoming show. Imran? Thanks for that, Ahmed. Uh, do stay with us. The post show is next on stream.aljazeera.com where for about eight to 10 minutes, we'll continue discussing Malaysia, the problems people have with that peaceful protest bill and the government's defense. So stream.aljazeera.com. You can tweet us using the hashtag AJStream. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the post show online.
Welcome back to the post show on stream.aljazeera.com. We're talking uh, Malaysia, We're getting <laughs> deeply into this discussion, really enjoying it. Um, Mr. Kamalanathan, I stopped you uh, just before the oh, end yeah. of the program because we needed to get to another segment before the end. I'm going to allow yes, you to uh, continue your point in the post show. Okay. A gentleman said just now that a police permit uh, is still needed. Do you still need to get an approval? No. They just need to inform police, uh, fill some forms, give it, just inform them. And this is if it's organized in a designated place. Okay. So uh, the, the permit uh, saying that the police would reject, of course, if you want to do it in front of a school or a hospital, they may not allow you to do it. And of course, they also need to go and check. Before they reject, they may want to go and check with the people who live around there, get their opinions. Are they okay if someone wants to do a peaceful? assembly here so if the residents there okay they have given uh, no problem anyone can come and do peaceful assembly here then the police have got no problems in allowing them to do so what we're going to do is we are going to allow the people who live in that area to give them an opportunity to decide whether they, they are approve uh, this assembly to be held in front of them if they are fine with it then I don't think the police okay. should have any problems okay. allowing them to do so Let right now we are just doing this because we have had complaints we have had uh, hundreds okay. and hundreds of police reports being made during this uh, kind of uh, uh, peaceful assemblies. Okay, Lim Chiwi, do you believe that? And do you believe that Prime Minister Najib Razak is actually serious about reform? I certainly do. Um, uh, arising from my experience of dealing with the Honourable Prime Minister, he made very good uh, promises on his Malaysia Day speech uh, this year. And to put it in context, some of these promises are being fulfilled. For example, the repeal of uh, certain outdated legislation. It is only this bill at the moment which has generated a fair bit of outrage amongst Malaysians. And this bill is important because it deals with our constitutional right of freedom of assembly. And if I can just address the issue of notification uh, against uh, uh, application for permit, that is certainly a positive uh, part of the, the bill. But because of the other parts of the bills, in respect of prohibition of procession, in respect of prohibited places, with 21 places uh, uh, stated therein, the actual democratic space for assembly is very narrow. And that then renders the freedom of, of assembly, the exercise of which to be rather meaningless. Mm. And that is the major objection of Malaysians. Can I just one last point? Sure. In respect of the uh, disruption to business, um, yes, there have been any number of police reports lodged, but let us look at that in context. That all arose because the police overreacted to some of these uh, uh, rallies organized by birthday and so on and so forth. What they then did was to lock down, lock out the city for at least one or two days. Hmm. So unfortunately, the way in which the police have addressed these issues have caused a fair amount of the problems we, we hear the, the learned uh, parliamentarian is complaining about. Okay. So we need a fundamental shift in police culture and mindset. Instead of clamping down assembly, facilitate assembly and work together with the demonstrators. Peck Kun Hang, we, we've been talking about the issues related to uh, how people can protest, if they can protest at all. Um, of course, the elephant in, in the cupboard is the issues they want to protest over. Help us understand what underpins this. Um, is it the you know ethnic uh, no. tension, some of the resentment, given that some ethnic Malays get uh, are, are looked upon no more longer. favorably than others? If we look at the two mass rallies that we that, that, that we saw for um, clean governance and electoral reform, they are truly multiracial. Hmm. You know, it's not about the end. It's not about affirmative action. It's about you know, wanting a government that's more responsive, you know, to the people's needs. So that, and this bill, unfortunately, appears to be out of touch with this broad desire of Malaysians, you know, especially younger Malaysians and non-Malays, you know, who, uh, who, 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 who sees that there are certain shortcomings, shortfalls in, in, the, in some of the, uh, the policies. And, and I think, you know, going back to Mr. Kamen um, um, you know, assertion that this is a good bill, but the government then has to convince the 49% of the electorate who did not vote for the government in the last election said this is a good bill. It, it will serve the interests of democracy. However, um, given the very negative um, chat on the blogosphere and the negative reaction, it seems to be a reversal, you know, to Najib's reformist agenda. 
he had he was doing very well, as uh, Mr. Lim said. You know, he had done all these things, and he had mended fences. You know, with the birthday organizers by setting up a parliamentary select committee to listen to the protests, to listen to the you know to listen to appeals, and then this came along. Mm. So it has provided a perfect rallying point for the opposition now to mobilize support in the coming elections. And I think this 30% swing vote that the, uh, that the uh, ruling part, the ruling coalition lost to the opposition in the last elections, it will be hard to bring back this swing vote that right. consists of youth and non Malays. So I, I think that Najib, Prime Minister Najib, has created a problem for himself mm. that, you know, that he was, he was well on his way you know, to, to, uh, you know, to um, mending fences, bringing back all these other people, you know, these, these uh, protesters. But it's unfortunate. Okay. You know that this has been done. Okay, Ahmed's plugged into the thoughts and feelings of the community. Well, I don't want to detract the or distract the conversation away from Malaysia, but I do wonder if perhaps we're witnessing a trend, perhaps in the region. Um, Kirsten Han chimed in earlier in the show. She's actually in Singapore. She says in Singapore, the Public Order Act has been used to stifle activist campaigns. She asks, will Mal Malaysia be the same now? And then in another tweet, she mentions that. In Singapore, they can't have street protests. They can only gather in one tiny park in the whole country. Now, the reason I bring this up, as you smile, uh, Mr. Kamal Nathan, <laughs> is, is that uh, Bcat DC on Twitter uh, was trying to challenge something I think you were speaking about earlier. He says, a protest that doesn't inconvenience anyone really isn't a protest. It's an angry person at home in a closet. So what about public squares? I know Imran read a list of places where people will not, no longer be able to assemble. Can they assemble in public squares? I'm sure if they write in uh, to inform the police of the intention to do this in a particular place, uh, the police have told them they will get back to them with such, uh, a few days after uh, clarification and people who reside or use that place. Uh, and if the police find that place is safe and people around there, it's convenient, they have no problem with the peaceful assembly, so, I'm sure they'll return back to them in positive. So, so then but back, having said that... I just yeah. want to say, so to clarify, I'm, forgive me if I'm not understanding, so then yeah. they do need permission. To uh, assemble. To the, permission, the permission from police is so that the police can go back to the place where people who are using that place. For example, if that public park right. has got an organized event, a concert taking place, so surely this public, uh, uh, the peaceful assembly cannot take place on the same day. So those are the things the police, the police want to help the peaceful demonstrators to participate, to pro protect them as well. That's very clear. But I agree with Dr. Pack. Dr. Prak, I'm in total agreement with you. I think the onus is right now to the, the government of uh, Malaysia to go and explain to the 40% of people what this bill is all about, to put them into point and tone. This is what the bill is all about. I agree with you. And I think that system, that is what's happening right now. I myself have met some fellow friends who are lawyers who were not very sure about this particular bill until I explained to them the detail and they will find about it. You know, So I think uh, I agree. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done, but we will continue informing people the, 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 the benefit of this particular assembly bill and how it's going to help Malaysians in the whole. Lim Chi Wee, there's a tweet that's come in from uh, at GKIT, Brian Yap, and uh, he says uh, PA 2011, the bill, is a cynical attempt to hoodwink Malaysians. It's a regressive piece of legislation disguised as positive reform. Do you think that there's actually that intention there to hoodwink people, Lim? Probably not on the part of the Prime Minister, but unfortunately, he may not be surrounded by the most uh, uh, clever of people. Uh, so that, that is the unfortunate part of it. Um, can I just address one issue? Sure. Let us look at how this bill was rushed through Parliament mm -hmm. compared to the recent announcement made by the Minister for Higher Education in amending our Universities and University Colleges Act, Section 15, which prohibits public universities uh, students from political participation. Now, in that uh, review, they are forming a committee which will draft the, the amendments, and that committee will go out there to engage the relevant stakeholders, the public, for feedback. Mm -hmm. and, and this bill, Peaceful Assembly Bill, is far more uh, important uh, than Section 15 in some ways. And yet, there was no wide consultation. Uh, there was no time taken to actually deliberate and consider feedback. It was just being rushed through Parliament. That, 
And that, I think, speaks ill of this particular bill. And I think it is never too late for the government or our Honourable Prime Minister to actually say, well, hang on here, maybe we have rushed it too, too fast, too far. Let's step back. Let's look at it again. Maybe, maybe the Malaysians who are unhappy with it have something uh, uh, correct after all. Okay. I'll uh, let that be the final word on the show. Chiwi Lim, P. Kamlanathan, and Peck Kun Hang. Thank you very much for discussing this. Thank you very much, Imran. Thank you. Thank you very much, Imran. Dr. Peck, thank you very much. Great. Thank you. I look forward to, thank you to you too. I look forward to our thank next uh, program on <laughs> Malaysia, hopefully in the not too distant future. Ahmed, thanks for all the feedback, mm -hmm. all the video questions. It was quite dynamic. As they, as they keep coming <laughs> yeah, in. As they kept coming in. Hope to see you on Monday. Uh, Ahmed will be here with. Derek, I'll see you the week after that. Keep watching the stream on stream.aljazeera.com. Bye-bye.